With gain in weight dosing and mixing units, the components are dosed into the weigh bin one by one and the respective weight gain is measured. The material is then dosed volumetrically based on the flow speed of the respective components. In practice, it looks like this. One dosing device discharges material for a set amount of time and the material flows into a weigh bin located below. The control registers the weight gain and compares the actual value with the set point value. From this, the control then calculates the flow speed of the material. If the actual and set point values are the same, the value is used again for the next dosing cycle. If the actual and set point values are not identical, the control will make a correction so that the components are available in the correct ration for the recipe. In contrast to synchronous dosing units, gain in weight units operate in batches and dose the components one after the other. This means that all components of a recipe are dosed into the same weigh bin with the correct percentage. Therefore, in which sequence the components are dosed into the weigh bin can be chosen. For free-flowing components, the main component is often dosed first and then the additives. For good rieselfähige components, it is in general so that the main component is first dosed and then the additive and the component components. This is also what Mo does when he drinks coffee. First, he pours coffee into a cup. Then he adds sugar, stirs it well, and delicious. That's how his coffee should taste. If, for example, the sugar shaker is not quite full, less sugar comes out. Mo needs to dose a bit more until his coffee is sweet enough. But sometimes it's the other way around. If his coffee is too sweet, Mo needs to add a little more coffee. But he needs to make sure his cup doesn't overflow. One example is dosing accuracy. If you look at a dosing device with a respective component, then there is absolute accuracy and, for example, plus minus two grams, which I can achieve with this dosing component. If, say, I have a set point value of 4 grams I need to dose, and the dosing accuracy is plus minus 2 grams, this would mean that in the case of overdosing, I would have 6 instead of 4 grams. These 6 grams would be a dosing deviation of 50%. If this small component was dosed as the second component after the main component, the overall dosing accuracy would then also be bad. However, if I instead if I dose this small component first, I can correct this mistake using more of the better flowing, larger main component and the overall dosing accuracy would be improved. Mo has also found a solution for his coffee problem. First of all, he uses a larger cup. Then he adds sugar and weighs exactly how much sugar there is. Because he knows the ratio he wants, he can measure precisely how much coffee he needs to add to the cup so that it's the correct sweetness for him. Mmm, this coffee is the best dosing result so far. In order to achieve better dosing results, it is of course important that the dosing devices are suited to the materials being used. A lot of experience goes into making the best possible choice. However, experience does not always cover every bulk material. This is why it's important to have the possibility to try out the material recipe in the technical center when necessary. Tests are then carried out using the dosing devices at the technical center to achieve the best possible results and only then is the ideally suited dosing device chosen.